Hi, Mark from Shark Bait again. I um, wanted to spend a couple minutes talking about Penn's new Torque series of spinning reels. Now, these are reels that we have been waiting for for a long time after first seeing them a couple of years ago when Penn began shipping uh, this past year uh, in 2000. 11 uh, didn't quite make 2010 as far as the introduction. Um, and like Penn has been doing here recently, they take a lot of time before putting a product on the market as far as doing some extensive field testing. And that's, that's a good thing from the standpoint of long-term ownership of a reel. Penn's long had an excellent reputation in terms of building a quality spinning reel. Now, a lot of guys who spend a lot of time on the water have used pin products for a lot of years because they're robust, you can get parts for them, they hold up well, and they perform over the past few years. You know, the market for a higher end you know, spinning reels has advanced. You know, part of that was probably due to guys doing some vertical jigging you know, and needing something a little more robust. You know. The other, I think, big part of it, at least from our perspective, our fellows that are tossing poppers out for, for bigger grade tuna, uh, recognizing that some of the poppers in terms of their weight uh, don't allow for much of the way of casting where a spinning reel can get, get beyond that. Uh, for use of artificials, uh, or use uh, you know, lighter weight lures, lighter baits, you know, a spinning reel is a wonderful tool to use. We on the west coast have been a little slower uh, in, in moving towards that direction. A lot of the guys here have been spoiled on live bait, uh, having the access to you know, good sardine bait for tuna and that sort of thing. You know, we're clients of ours in the oh, eastern part of the country, out of this country, fish in the Gulf. Typically haven't had that, that resource or that <laughs> crutch to depend upon. You know, have made greater use of, of spinning you know, equipment given the casting capabilities of it. You know, Penn introduced you know, the Torque series of reels and they've been rare board birds. You know, about 50 of them being produced you know, each month and that's not many to fill a pipeline. You know, the, the slowdown there has been the gears because they're quite sophisticated and there's only one place that can cut these gears for the pin folk and that happens to be a firm in UK you know, that does that. The Torque series of reels are manufactured here in the US. Very strong, very robust. We'll do a little zooming in and, and show you that more closely here in just a moment. But basically we're dealing with, with three size reels. Uh, the smallest is a little five which uh, is a very powerful piece and we'll go over the features again in a moment. Then we bump up to the Model 7, you know, a little bit bigger, and then their, their big dog is the 9. And the 9 simply steps that up, you know, one more notch here in terms of size uh, and, and spooling capability. Well, give me just a moment and I'll set up the screen and we'll go ahead and do a little zooming in. Okay, here we've got the three torque reels, the three main body sizes, the Model 5, Model 7, Model 9. You'll notice on the 9 you know, that this particular one is baleless. The reels are, are uniquely available both with a bale and without a bale. You know, and also, very interesting, you have the ability of using the bale, if you, if you so desire, in a manual mode with a switch here on the back of the reel. Let me try and zoom in a little bit and show that more closely to you. you know, yeah, let's see here. Right here on the side, you know, on the back of the spool, there's a switch. And so you can switch that over for manual operation or automatic. Now, why is that important? Well, on fishing heavier test lines, it is quite important. You know, having an auto bail trip is not a plus you know, if you're fishing larger grade tuna, heavier lines, you know, heavier drag settings. Now, all of the pin torques are reversible as far as being left or right hand retrieve. Uh, so this, the arm will switch over quite easily to the other side. Uh, commonly, on a spinning reel, we're winding with the left hand. Uh, your power is going to be on your right as far as maintenance of the rod. Uh, that's one switch from conventional gear to spinning gear. You know, that some guys have some difficulty making the transition. But the idea is that you've got, you know, you're working with your power. You know, on a, on a two-speed, yeah, cranking arm is going to be more critical to you. On a spinner, at being able to pump and wind uh, is more critical. Uh, so that's the reason why you have that switch you know, between you know, left hand <laughs> doing the cranking on a spinner and the right hand on a conventional. Uh, but this is also changeable on the pin reels. You've got a manual or automatic bale. You also have baleless design uh, on this piece as you can see. 
There is no bail. Again, a little more simple. A lot of the guys who've done surf fishing for years prefer that. Sometimes the guys on the big fish will, will exhibit the same preference because it's one, one less issue uh, as far as uh, you know, potential uh, for uh, an error uh, or a problem. Uh, but you know, it is rock solid in terms of the reliability uh, with the bales, especially when you can take this back and do it man. In terms of specifications on the three reels, uh, a Model 5 is really, oh, if you're spooling with mono on a 5, you'd be getting about 350 yards, a 12-pound line, call it 300 to 15. On a Model 7, uh, you're at 300 and, oh, say 300 yards at 25, uh, close to 350 at 20. And on a Model 7, uh, excuse me, on a Model 9, you bump that up uh, to 330 yards, a 30 pound. Um, that's not the way most of these guys are used these days. Typically on spinning gear, we're running more Spectra than we are Mono. Uh, the Spectra having, you know, essentially no memory. Line twist, not an issue. Uh, mono, we, especially when you're working against drag, uh, you're introducing a line, line twist every time you're cranking. Um, you know, against drag on a, on a larger fish, so you've got more issues with memory and that sort of thing. Uh, the hot ticket is to run these guys on Spectra. They're made for use of Spectra lines, um, you know, spooled up appropriately with backing and that sort of thing, so there's no slippage on the spool. But rigged up with Spectra, you gain line capacity because the Spectra is a third the diameter of mono. In use with Spectra, given the robust construction of these pieces, uh, you wind up gaining a lot of line capacity. Uh, for the little seven, you can basically get about 300 yards of 50 pound Spectra on here. And then you run just a real shorty leader, you know, a little bit of fluorocarbon on the end, that sort of thing. Uh, on a Model 7, you can pull that up. Uh, you've got about, oh, almost 400 yards of 65 pound line. That's a great place to be. Uh, Model 7 fills a bill for a lot of guys on tuna. Going after the bigger fish on a Model 9, you can get, oh, yeah, it's about 500 yards of 80 pound Spectra on here. Um, with 100 pound spectra, you know, the estimate can range from that same level if you're using Jerry Brown's uh, 16 strand 100 pound, or if you use a different manufacturer's 12 strand, you're probably in the neighborhood of about 425 yards uh, of, of 100 pound uh, spectra on the piece. In terms of drag capability, the Model 7 will turn 38 pounds of drag, 41 pounds on the 7, uh, and then a whopping 50 pounds on the 9. Now, a high drag rating means nothing if the reel isn't strong enough to deal with it. These guys are, are use a full metal body. It's anodized appropriately. It's a one-piece machined aluminum frame. It's forged and machined aluminum spool, the side plates, and one-piece handle arm. One-piece handle arm, very, very strong. This is not something you're going to bend or snap off. And some of the higher-end spinners have arms that, that look rather delicate to my mind, especially if you're dealing with a larger grade fish. Now, that's not a plus. Now, these guys also use pins HT100s, which are a very reliable drag system. Great as far as the capability, and it's a Versa drag. So you can, you can change the, the range of that drag op operation. You can, you can have it run a little bit lighter on the drag and more gradually as far as bumping her up, or you can go for a max setting and really, you know, fish these guys heavy at high drag settings. But they'll do both. Now, they have an integral clutch on these guys, so there's no back play uh, on the arm, uh, which you won't notice that during a hook set. It's, it's instant engaged, um, which is a nice thing. They use seven sealed, not, not shielded, not open, but seven sealed bearings on these reels. They spin well, they cast great, they feel great in the hands, but they're reliable. Now, aside from the bearings not being an issue, um, these guys also use a sealed drag system. Uh, so we're not going to be getting saltwater intrusion uh, within the reel. That's a big plus. Um, let's see what else. Eh, machine cut, uh, they use a bronze main gear, uh, a stainless steel pinion. Um, basically, it's, it's the kind, and they're, they're not priced badly from pin. Um, Competing pieces offering some similar features and missing out on some others, I should say, uh, range around a grand, pretty close to it. Now, these reels start in the, the mid sixes and work up to about seven, I guess. Um, so they're very, very competitively priced, which is a good thing. They're produced here in this country, which is a good thing. They're pinned, which means long-term parts and service, not an issue. You know, 
and they're robust as all get out. You know, when, at least for me, when I've looked at all the other pieces on the market, on a higher end spinning reel, you know, again, that's pretty limited, you know, not all guys can swing a deal like that, but if, if you're looking for the best in terms of a spinning reel, you have to look at the torques, and when you compare them to other pieces, really you're comparing these to reels that are costing a thousand dollars and they are more robust they're a stronger piece I mean with this type of construction I, I have no issue dealing with the larger fish on the other end none and you can see what I mean about that instant yeah no play no play in that handle at all you're engaged um, nice reels pin hit the nail on the head again you know, this is something that again they needed in their line uh, they developed it. They took the time to make sure the market research was done right, the field testing was done right before they brought them to market. And now they're here. Uh, finally, we're starting to see some decent inventory that way in both the bailed and the bailless designs. I think it's a winner. Uh, and for anybody going out there tossing either live, you know, light live bait or even more importantly having the fun of tossing out poppers, these guys certainly deserve to be on your shopping list. S certainly check them out without a doubt and chances are they'll compete very very favorably with everything else on the market and offer a little bit more strength and robustness than other pieces that I've come across. That feature of a, of a automatic or manual bail is a big one. Uh, that certainly is a big feature. You know, on big fish go manual. Uh, lighter duty stuff, a lot of cast and you know, popping a little stuff, go ahead and go automatic. You know. Thank you.